Perfectionism is something that affects all creatives and a lot of other people in the world. No matter what you do, the thing that you're creating or doing, you want it to look good. You want to be perfect with it. Or maybe you're someone who is designing like a logo, doing some hand lettering, a painting, and you know there's something in there that's wrong, but you don't know what to do. You don't know how to fix it. So you spend hours and hours and hours trying to fix the problem and then realize you're not really doing much. It's just become less productive over time. Well, today I'm going to be showing you some top tips on how to stop perfectionism in the creative arts, such as design and painting. You may be thinking that perfectionism is a good thing because it means that, you know, we strive that extra mile to get to where we need to be within, let's say, logo design. And this video has been derived from people asking me, when do you know that the logo is done? Because I always say there's always something else that you could be doing to that logo to make it better. But when do you decide it's done and how do you do that? So the people who are asking that question are perfectionists because they just want to get that logo perfect. They can't stand the idea of their logo not being the best. But before I get into the tips, I just want to thank the sponsor of this video, FreshBooks. Tip number one, this will change the way that you work. This will actually help you in all areas of creativity and I call it the power of reduction. When in logo design and in general minimalistic design, what we're doing is really reducing down any core elements that we don't need. So anything that we don't need in the logo, we get rid of. The logo design process sort of starts out messy. And when I'm designing a logo, as you've seen in plenty of other videos, they start off really complicated. And what I do is I reduce them down over time until when we reduce it down so much, it doesn't make sense or it doesn't work. This is great for logo design and also great for painters in the same way. We reduce down the core elements of what we're painting or designing till we get to the place of what we have. Now I use the power of reduction to reduce the amount of time that I spend on something and to help me make decisions. To stop being a perfectionist, you have to start making more concrete decisions. And these decisions can be subjective but they are kind of objective as well because it allows you to see whether in this logo design, if we take this certain asset away from it, does it still work? Yes or no. And we can start experimenting and we're questioning the way the logo is and the composition and the design of it. Tip number two is deadlines. Obviously, there comes a point in time with your client where you need to have that logo done. So I use milestones and deadlines as sort of this needs to be finished by then. I will have like two or three milestones before the deadline at the end of the project. These milestones have to encapsulate either a concept or they have to have a presentation with the logo and I would have to have thought how this logo works. Does it actually fit with the brand? Can I present this as a good logo? When I get to the end stage, so when I'm at the basically near the deadline, I will generally be finalizing the logo until the last day. If there's nothing else I can do, I will send the logo there. Obviously, if something's massively wrong with the logo, then I'm not going to be sending it to the client because that wouldn't make any sense. I'm going to fix it. But to stop my perfectionist mind from going AWOL on me and just ruining the design by perfecting it all the time and missing the deadlines, I will generally stick with the deadline as the day. And if there's anything majorly wrong I find out after, I will have to email the client and tell them, look, here, this is different, but I need you to take this version of the logo. Think of it like a time limit in an exam. If you are writing an, or in an exam writing a story or whatever, and you've got a time limit, then you can't afford to be perfect in everything. There's a great quote that has inspired this video by Stefan Kunz that uses all the time, which is done is better than perfect. What happens with perfectionists is that we start something and never finish it because it's never perfect. It's never ready or allowed to be viewed online without it being perfect. Understanding that your work needs to be done and you have a deadline to it and there is a consequence if you don't get it to that place will get you there. It will get you to do that work. 
you will finish it. Another tip I want to give you is ruin the canvas. This is something that I've mentioned on some of my logo live streams in the past. I'm not afraid to show the workspace that I work in or how my process works. It's very messy when it comes to logo design. A lot of logo designers are afraid to sort of start messy in their work. Now, if you've got something called fear of blank canvas, I guess it's got something to do with your perfectionism. You don't want to ruin this expensive canvas with your painting. Now, I do a lot of painting as well. I do abstract artwork painting, just messing around with colors. And this has really helped me understand my perfectionism and how I can beat it. So when I get blank canvas fear, what I do is I ruin the canvas. It sounds a bit strange, but genuinely works. I will have a canvas that I bought for 30 to $60. It will be massive. I don't know where to start. I just want to just put some paint on there and I hope that it looks good. Now to stop the fear, I will just scribble some lines on the canvas and make the canvas worthless. And this generally works because the work at the end looks really nice. When you work from a place in your mind where the, the, either the document on your iPad or the artboard in your vector program or the canvas that you're working on, when that is ruined and you don't really care about the outcome of your idea generations, then you're not going to have the perfectionist mindset. Someone who has a perfectionist mindset generally is just scared of failing. Now, all design and art is about a journey. It's not about the destination you get there. It's about what you're doing to get there. Now, when you're designing a logo, and obviously we've got a destination of where we need to be, I would suggest in Illustrator just to mess up your canvas a little bit. Copy and paste the logo so many times, change little elements on it, and it will be less daunting to you because you start to realize that you're just going down different paths in this journey. Another tip is also a mindset tip, which I would advise you all to take on. And that is simply nothing is ever perfect. There is no piece of work out there that is perfect. People may call it perfect, but it's not. So when you get into that end stage of the design process or that painting or that piece of hand lettering or illustration, and you're just thinking there's something missing, of course, feel free to keep going as long as you want. Don't strive, strive, strive. Don't stifle your creativity based upon time if you can help it. But also remember, that thing will never be perfect. It will never be that thing that you've got in your mind. It will always change. And that is the journey of creativity. Now, for those of you where perfectionism is affecting your life a lot, I want you to go through this exercise and it's a two second exercise. Right now, think of what you're trying to create. Now think of the worst case scenario. What is the worst case that would happen if it's not perfect? I always say, aim for the sun and hit the moon. If you can aim for high standards, that's great, but always be expecting just to hit the moon. Even hitting that moon is an achievement in itself. Once you've hit the moon or you've done what you need to do and you're just finding yourself not doing any more artwork because it's never perfect in your eyes, you need to do this other exercise as well, which is give yourself a reason to move on. For me and a lot of other designers, we always have a reason to move on and that is for a new client. We can't be working on the same project forever. We always need to move on. So if you're painting, designing a font, doing a logo, designing an illustration, whatever you want, give yourself a reason to move on from that project. And that goes back to deadlines. Now you may be thinking to yourself that you do not have perfectionism. You just have high standards. Now this may be true. You may have the highest of standards, but if you are simply struggling with your work and the high standards, you need to lower them. That's the easiest way of dealing with this. For me on YouTube, I've had to lower my standards in design many times because I'm always comparing myself to someone else's work and a piece of work that I've done earlier that looks good. I have to lower my standards when I'm designing on a live stream or even when I'm talking to you right now because I'm always going to be trying to do better and I've got plenty of other chances to do so and I'm getting better in every video in every logo design but I have to check where my standards are. Are they too high for right now? Are your standards so high that it's affecting your output of work? If you're a designer, then you'll know that getting paid can be a bit of a tricky process, but not only that, sending invoices, collecting your expenses and getting your accountant to do your tax stuff, kind of a ache, but ache. But I'd like to thank FreshBooks for sponsoring 
this video. FreshBooks is a cloud accounting service online where you can gather up all your expenses, send out all your invoices in one neat little place. I love FreshBooks because when we use it to send invoices out, we use it on one page, it's one website, we can communicate with the client from there and the best thing in the world, we can see when the client has viewed that invoice. It's very clear. Not only can you set up reoccurring invoices, FreshBooks allows you to add late payment fees to it also. So clients will definitely pay. And at the end of the tax year, or when you need to sort out your taxes, it's very easy to onboard your accountant into your FreshBooks profile as well. And I haven't even begun to go into the fact that you can link your bank account to FreshBooks so it will track all of the expenses from that account automatically. Don't take it from me though, if you'd like to try FreshBooks without a credit card required for 30 days completely free, then click the link down below in the description and also let them know that I, Will Patterson, sent them to you. If you did enjoy this video guys, please press that red subscribe button down below. It helps me when you do that and also remember you can always unsubscribe at any time, but it means that you'll see more videos like this. Let me know if you struggle with perfectionism down below in the comments and have yourself a great day. See you soon, goodbye.